Take it away, Mr. Host. Yo, we, we're here, finally, after 4,000 years and about 30 chapters. 40 chapters? I think it's 30 chapters. The arc is, uh, well, the part that we're covering is like over 20, 30, 30 chapters. chapters. But yeah, we're finally back at Dan Dan. The last time we talked about this was like, it was just coming out, and we had finished the first, like, our second, like, big arc. I would Which say. was the Arisa gets her her like, Akrosoki. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She gets kidnapped and all that. Which, um, which was great. And so I want to bring up Willer at the time. You were very worried about the progression of the romantic parts of this. Yeah. Oh, manga. I was so wrong. Like, <laughs> especially as of the most recent chapter we yeah. read, which I believe was uh fifty five. Fifty five, maybe. I didn't write notes for it. Yeah. I'm so bad. Um. No, like, I, I think, like, we... I, I just, like, Dan to Dan for us has been getting better and better every time. Yeah, 55. And so we're just, at this point, we wanted to talk about it after... Oh, God, we're going to Google Hangouts again. No. I, we, I wanted to talk about it after you finished the, this Loch Ness Monster arc. That was the plan originally. And then, I forget what the hell happened. What happened was, I... Kept reading, and, and then like I breached into the new arc. I was like, oh, we're in the new arc. And then you're like, well, keep reading, because I think the arc's going to finish soon. Yeah. But it ended up being kind of a lengthy well, arc. Yeah. And by the time that I, I just caught up over a few yeah. days, because I had, I had that reading itch. <laughs> and at the time, like I was thinking, like, oh, the last few arcs have been like 10 or so chapters. And that one was like 26 or yeah, so. Yeah, it was, it was Actually, a Actually, it's, it's still ongoing, maybe. It's kind like, of. It's in like its weird transitional stages. Which, yeah. So anyways, but we're going to get started, and we're going to start with the Loch Ness Monster arc. Yeah, I wonder what these arcs are named. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to... Loch Ness we're, Monster We are pioneers in the industry. I haven't seen any YouTube videos about this brilliant sh- oh, series, so I, like... Yeah, I see the manga... I go to the manga sections all the time so in this arc um i'm gonna have to remember the names because god forbid you name something with a different vowel for a different character arisa is kind of like more formally introduced into the group yeah which it gets introduced with what i worried was gonna be like an annoying love triangle Mm -hmm. which next star arc it becomes potentially love like square so it's it is the one thing that's always worried me about this series. As soon as Arisa got introduced, I was like, mm-hmm. is this character going to do well for kind of what I'm enjoying for the series? Yeah. And I think right now, as a whole, for me, I'm at like still like a, she's in like, she's definitely in the lower part of the our four or five, six main protagonists in mm-hmm. the series because. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely the least interesting one. Yeah. Um, I do like her bit though that she comes up with at the end of this where she's like I'm the chosen one I'm the main uh, character the protagonist I just think it's really funny it is, it's cute but it's the kind of quirk that in the wrong hands could be bad I think this author is so good at drawing or like making good character moments mm-hmm. and like stuff like good dinner scenes or good hangout scenes mm-hmm. that humanize these characters so even with her quirk I don't know I don't think she'll be too bad no I want to see more of her just to, like, help her flesh out. But right now, she definitely feels in, like... She feels like a fill-in character or, like, we need that... We need another relatively same age female. Because, like, her... Yeah, like, I love, like... We just kind of need someone to break up the love triangle a little bit on the female side and then Mm -hmm. someone on the male side. Yeah. Uh, But also in this arc, it was really funny. Uh, So when we were discussing this previously, we had done... Like, we had gone through two arcs with yokai in them. Yes. And we were like, I wonder when the aliens are going to show up, or is he going to completely drop it? And you were like, don't worry, the aliens are coming, but... And I don't yeah. know if I don't know if, if this is in your structure or not. I, well, yeah, what's your game plan here, Joe? What, yeah, I mean, just, I'm going to just, like, I'm going to just... Because it seems like right now you're just reminding yourself what happens in the uh, arc, which is fair, because it was a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. It's remember. that, but, like, I just also want to, like, I'm trying to think back to, like, things that we discussed previously, and yeah. kind of circle back around to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Like I said, like they, they reintroduce the, the aliens again. We get the same banana boys with the, the freaky looking. Which I'm glad they came back. Re- recurring, uh, a recurring disguise. Yes. For them is the penis banana boys. <laughs> um, and then we get introduced to the boxing version of their uh, their guys. We made some great fights. I think the fight scenes in the, all in the past arcs have been tremendous. This one, like, 
If there's one thing I want to bring up for this arc, if we want to go into the topic of action, if that's yeah. where we kind of yeah. want to like tackle right first, is mm. the setting of a flooded school with a looming Loch Ness yeah. monster going through the halls mm-hmm. is so visually interesting. And like, there's a lot of water in this arc that like feeds into the action wheel. For example, I don't. Is, this isn't Chiquita, is it? Or like, there's two punching aliens, or I one? Think there's I don't two remember. because this guy gets turned into. Uh, the super version, or no? Maybe this guy gets pushed away. Maybe that's Chiquita. Chiquita is one of these aliens. That might be. We him. love Chiquita. He's a he's one of the crew. Yeah, he's he's in. He got <laughs> he got his milk for his sixth son. <laughs> but um, anyways, these punching aliens they'll punch and like create like very visually nice shock waves mm-hmm. on the ground and on the water. Side tangent: I love when a manga artist draws good shock waves yeah. in action scenes. I think that's. That's something that anime does a poor job at, like, representing, like, something about, like, a manga-drawn, black-and-white standstill th- shot. Yeah, I think manga have the, has, the ben- has the benefit of the medium that you have the time to, like, take your time across the page and see the entire effect of the shock wave. Mm-hmm. Whereas anime, you have, like, the one or two, like, cut shots to see everything. Yeah. And then you have to move on because if you don't, you're just gonna, it's like that... Goku screaming into the wind, charging up kind of filler that you don't want to be doing. Exactly. And then, like, other cool things with actions, like, there's these cool shots where, like, people dodging punches and the foreshortening is used really well. I'll try to... I am recording the screen, so (laughs) maybe I'll put this stuff in there, but you never know. Stuff also, like, during the action scenes, this author who... Whose name escapes me, but he's, like, a goat, so I need to remember it. I'm gonna look him up right now. It's, uh... Tatsu, that's right. Yeah. Um, the way he like bends the panels sometimes like to show this. impact. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like stuff like the Loch Ness monster looming underneath. Mm-hmm. There's also a very cool spinning bird kick from Street Fighter reference in this arc. Yeah, uh, Arise does it when she unlocks her like silk song, silk song, but her silk powers. And then um, I think one of the most brilliant little it's it's an action and comedy bit mm-hmm. with this arc is when they uh. When Okarun and Ayase kind of combine their powers to jet ski through the water, Mm -hmm. that's a really creative implementation of her power. So, like, uh, not only is the action drawn really cool, it's it's creative, it's kinetic, and these little combo attacks are really cute. But also it builds on their relationship because they have this cute moment under the water where, like, they kind of rely on each other. They Mm -hmm. use each other's strength and courage to keep going. And 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 so, yeah. And I think to, like, branch onto that, I think know, something that I'm noticing in each arc is that, like, every time there is, like, a conflict with whatever's happening right now, the two of them resolve, like, some other internal conflict they're having with each other at the same time. This arc opened up with, like, a fake-out of, like, like Ar- Arisa kissing Okaru. Or trying so to they, or something, yeah. they started on, like, a weird point, and mm-hmm. then... It looked. It was very much like a walked into the building at the wrong time and see something, that's... which could be played really annoyingly. But yeah. I think this was uh, well executed. Yeah. Um. So the yeah, like like it's like right here, they're they're at this point up just before the jet ski things happen, where like Okaru's like I'm trying to make myself useful, and they're having this whole argument about like what they need to be doing, and then they realize like you know we can be useful together not this we don't need to necessarily try to like be more useful than the other person and try to like surpass each other and then like over here um right and then yeah okra was just straight up be straight with me like is something bothering you so Mm -hmm. like it's cool because they're communicating their relationship issues while communicating on the battlefield um yeah and the author's just really good at mixing all this with like Mm -hmm. again all the aforementioned good action but also the good comedy which some of the better comedy bits in this arc, if I uh, <laughs> noted any, uh, it is funny. Like the jet skis, fucking is comedy brilliance. Yeah, just it's like they're using it like a little like the little like slippery slugs you would have as like a kid and squeezing <laughs> yeah. it, and like it's just propelling itself forward. But at the same time, it's like yeah, like it's a creative solution to the pro- power problem, and it's and it's funny and it's. A little bit sexual in some way, but I guess I mean this art gets weirdly sexual because everyone's naked, which is yeah. kind of funny, but also Acro Silky, the way she moves is just like constantly dodging at like mm. ass shots and panty shots. Yeah. Or uh, until she's just full naked, it's like, well there's no escaping. One now. thing that is missing from these bits of with the aliens is like 
the yokai have like their background or like their their like uh, flashbacks that they have. Yeah. And I think that's some of the strongest writing that happens in there because Definitely. like I think and he's he steps up his game every time because we had Akros with you last time and you find out it's the mother of this daughter that got taken away yeah. and then she committed suicide and she was like a prostitute and you're like wow like, holy shit and there's a lot of cool like these yokai bond with people that can empathize with them mm -hmm. and, and like people with these flaws i mean Gigi's perfect unfortunately yeah uh, but arisa is <laughs> like a very flawed person but even like she can see through it and empathize with, mm -hmm. with silky so like that's why they have this weird bond at least i think that's what the story's going for yeah and so it's interesting that like we have these aliens and they are not given the same level of nuance which is uh, what I would say is the one weakness of this arc. Uh huh. And the, it's these... like we're back to the aliens, but they're still very goofy, and that's still kind of the case next arc. Yeah. Where there's aliens and yokai in that arc. Yeah. Um. However, the aliens are just kind of. I guess the one thing you can take away from there is that the like, yokai used to be human, so you could there's a, there's a sort of baseline this thing there where like they yeah they're like there's a lot of human emotions and grudges that yeah. goes into the yokai, and then the aliens are. Aliens, so they don't really necessarily understand the things that we're going through uh, mm -hmm. in the world. But um, but then also we get like the final boss of this arc, which is a combined fusion. a fusion of. The, do they? Ex I forget. Do they explain where the Loch Ness monster comes from? Do they just like grab it from their? I forget their explanation of why this. Thing I is do forget. I thought it was just an alien that that I, is part of the gang. I, I don't remember. I'll have to look this up again. It's been like quite literally months since I've read this arc. Yeah. I'm sure it was... I did Joe Dirty by, yeah. by being so, so good. I through. feel like they had it and they brought it in with them to like the school to like try to, hunt, to help them hunt them down. Yeah. No, it, it, it is just part of the alien gang, as yeah. I recall it. Yeah. If I remember that correctly. They're just like... It just looks like the Lock It ends up being a fusion versus a fusion, though, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other other cool action panels as we're going scrolling through these is a chapter yeah. twenty four page eight and nine, this this attack that's kind of like yeah, bending yeah. the frame a little bit. He's, a lot of cool bending the frame attacks. It looks like it's pushing down on like the manga like panel yeah. itself, so it's like. And also, just the aqua lasers mm -hmm. look fantastic. Yeah. Um. The oh, so the hypest moment of the arc, if it's a very action packed arc, looking back on it, yo, is Ayase splitting the sea. Yeah, that is definitely like big, up, big up moment. Uh, Okar that's, that's I also like Okaroon's big, uh, mm -hmm. big uh, headbutt attacks. But also, I forgot that the climax here is like it is a fusion versus fusion battle. Yeah, where the like oh uh, the aliens combined and like are adding on to the Loch Ness monster, but the kids are learning to fight together. Mm -hmm. And Akro Silky making a road so Okarun can run underwater. Yeah, with her hair is really cool, and that, that actually makes Akro Silky more interested. I think like action wise, Okarun's a little limited because he he all he can do is go fast. He goes fast, but every all the other characters also go fast. So like mm -hmm. his attacks a headbutt, while she at least has some hair manipulation, yeah. which I like. And a future party member yeah. kind of has, like, a box and, like, he can create a soccer Man, ball. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that future party member, well, we're going to talk, talk to him about him soon. <laughs> Uh, man. The uh, final strike is a sight to behold because yeah. one, it looks incredible, but then it's like Okarun's little ash cheeks. This is in <laughs> chapter 24, page 26, 27. What the? This guy's yeah. doing weekly uh, long ass chapters, yeah. which is insane. Tatsu is inhuman. I know. And like he was doing this bi weekly too. Like, it, is it bi weekly? It was, and now it's just weekly because they come out every week. I Unless they just take a break. Oh, then we, <laughs> in the next chapter, we just get this shot. <laughs> right. The the other good comedy bit is they they them all coming back to the school, mm -hmm. um, just in front of everyone, and it's very hilarious and embarrassing. I don't. This talk is just incredibly awkward. <laughs> Look at them. They're just <laughs> <laughs> ah! that's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Oh, oh my god, and then the nurse. I forgot about the Dami nurse. Man, whatever. <laughs> Does she even show up again? No, but she's going to. Like, you can't throw away that design. There's no way. <laughs> oh man, sometimes the kids are drawn so cute. Like, uh, when they're wet here in chapter 25. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I really like Ayase in that bottom left panel. Yeah. <laughs> with the, like, ugh face. <laughs> 
Um, and then the arc kind of ends explaining the relationship between yokai and aliens. Which I thought was neat. It's a good, like, kind of, like, little bit of world building of just, like, here's why, like, there isn't just shit happening all the time with the aliens. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, there's just the one thing you can't understand because it's a spiritual medium rather than, like, a scientific thing. Um... And yeah, and they reestablished the fact that they need to find Okuro's balls again. Back to the Dragon Ball search. Yeah. But now Arisa is a party member. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how? I guess we could talk about how we feel about Arisa. Is that within the yeah, game plan? Fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, she was kind of annoying in the, her introductory arc, but I like how she played off the team in this one. Mm -hmm. um, next arc doesn't feature her very much, but she does come back near the end of it, mm -hmm. if, if that is the end of the arc. So she very clearly will be a recurring character. And it's like, I wonder where we can take her story to make right. her more interesting. Because she very much has, like, main protagonist syndrome, which yeah. is funny, I think, because it's like, uh, we want to... She, she wants to be the one that's saving everybody, um, but she does understand that what's happening, what's going on. And I think, which is ironic, too, considering that they were able to get through this whole situation helping each other rather than like one person taking the lead um and then we get to this moment like right before that's like the 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 edging of like ayase is going to confess to okarun or say something about like how yeah. she's feeling there's there's some of that here and then the best friends show up <laughs> And look, we'll forgive them because they are the best characters. So, so while we were while I was reading this, I was also playing Grey Ace, Ace Attorney, and one of her just goes into a full Sherlock Holmes like <laughs> breakdown segment of like what's going on. In other words, it's clear. <laughs> nude. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nude gladiatorial combat happened. I love how in, this is in chapter twenty six, page four and five. Yeah, they're fighting with protractors and rulers yeah. over Okaroon. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like. Why does Arisa like Okaroon again? It was very, like, because, shallow when it started. Because I think he was the one... He was performing CPR on her when they were, like, doing it. And I think she attributed that to, like, bringing her back to life or saving her. And also, she saw him flying around killing the other thing. And she can't well, see... I thought it was, like, a bravery angle. Maybe. Um, but, I mean, it was at the end of the other. I got neither of us remember, and yeah. it hasn't been reinforced. Yeah, I know. So that's not good. Well, she... <laughs> Yeah, um, and then here she is. She's trying to, like, I think, upplay herself and then trying to put Ayase down. So this is the big character growth moment. Is that, Yeah, that actually was pretty good. Is that she's the one that she's like, no, I spread lies about those two, and I spread lies about uh, Ayase and whatever. And so it ostracizes her from the rest of the group, but then that lets her get brought into the rest of the group. Or like, so it's an arc of, like, she was, the po she was a popular girl before yeah. this started. Yeah. Um, but now she kind of showed her true colors of, like, using people and... <laughs> hey, Chiquita shows up. Uh, of, like, using people and kind of uh, uh -huh. using her status as someone popular for not-so-great Yeah, this is, like, causes. the ep this is the epilogue of the arc, so it's kind of, like, where a lot more of the character interactions come around. Chiquita shows up, and we find out that he's a little tiny boy. Uh, Who's very cute. He's adorable. Um, and they bring him back home. I swear I'll never try to hurt you people again. And yeah, he won't. He's yeah. going to be a, a good buddy. Uh, there's a bonus chapter that they go and like collect cans and have a race or something. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Oh yeah, the can, vi like, the can virus episode. That yeah, was a little wild filler episode. I don't remember anything about this. It's a... Uh... It's a cute little side chapter is yeah. what it is. It does end with like, I, I like the little ending where like, where, like she kind of shoulder checks him yeah. a little bit. But anywho, I mean... <laughs> That kind of wraps up that arc. <laughs> well, there's still some more epilogue. I, what I really like about this, I think this is chapter... 27 here. 27. Uh, there's like a, what I consider like an Oda-style dinner conversation. And mm -hmm. this author is really good at doing that. Where they'll show the characters eating or doing an activity and have multiple conversations going on at once. But as you read from like right to left, it... Uh, it yeah. uh, Kind of reads as like an uh, ongoing conversation, yeah. like uh, moving, like time is moving and stuff is happening in sequential order, but it's mm -hmm. all captured in one nice big panel. Um, and it, yeah, it's complete hijinks, which cuts into Chiquita going, My son is sick, which, <laughs> which is fucking hilarious. 
Because it goes from goofball to complete, like, I'm very serious right now. Yeah. But then you find out it's like a milk sickness, so it's like extra goofball. He just needs calcium. Yeah. It's just a big misunderstanding of, like, how each other's world work. And I think also that goes back to Ayase and Okru, where, like, there was a misunderstanding between them, and they just had to talk, and they could figure out their problems. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, because they needed to understand, like, Chiquita. He's not yeah. such a bad guy. He's yeah. trying to help his son. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, Chiquita's one of, like, six aliens that was in that group, but you understand now why he was doing that thing and what he was going for. It was for the greatest setup punchline. It's like... It's like this whole chapter, and a lot of the previous arc was setting up to this big double spread page in chapter 27, Mm -hmm. where a cow's getting abducted by a spaceship, and it's like, we have crafted the storyline where this makes sense, and it's not just some goofy, like, (laughs) sci-fi from the 60s kind of And it feels like a satisfying conclusion of that entire conflict, too, (laughs) which is incredible, because it's like... It's hilarious, but yeah, you're right, it does feel like good. Uh And then the fucking ship looks like the Falcon from Star Wars, and you're like, what the fuck it's very good yeah i think that the arc ends when gg's introduced briefly right which is right at the very end which here. is right at the end and gg shows up he's a yase's ex and is boom we're in the love square yeah. now baby so this is the part where i was like i wonder this is so you had like reservations when arisa got showed up i had reservations when gg showed up and like that was like at this chapter because like um i think for me like the problem with the introduction of the male like love interest love interests is uh i don't i don't know it's just never as fun as like the female ones but that might be like you know there's the male I, so a lot of the complete different yeah. Fem- the female love triangle like the female heavy love triangle is way more annoying mm-hmm. i feel like girls are written to be way more annoying in that scenario than boys mm-hmm. and like I will say that, like, as far as Gigi goes, he's a much better character than Arisa. Oh, like, I agree. But I think I also was worried that like, Yase was going to fond over Gigi, which was also my biggest fear, was that, like, she never let him go, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that'd be interesting. It may be, but, like, at the same time, it's just, like, the, the two of you have been together and doing it's all It's better this. than the misunderstanding girl who is like, oh, do you like me, Okarun? And he's like, well, I'm too shy to say no. <laughs> I like, gotta do push-ups. <laughs> yeah, I I much prefer that. So, um, But then when we get introduced to Gigi, and he shows up and he looks super cool. He's super tall. He's like, you can tell me like he's, he's like in a tracksuit. He's the biggest fucking goofball on the entire planet. And uh, there's a lot of great com- like physical comedy done with Gigi's size. Yes. Which I really like it. How much taller he is than like every other. Like character. he has to like scrunch himself to fit into this panel so he can like fit for like the picture. <laughs> it's cute. so good. Um, but immediately like after as, as soon as this chapter came out, I mean, it was like, all right, I'm fine with this this character. Um, so then we start. And Arisa is like getting better and better over time. Too. Yeah. But I think Gigi starts strong, and uh-huh. but his like the arc to add Gigi into the main crew is so well executed yeah. in my opinion. And there's like a mini arc that happens right before that where like they have to go take care of this mannequin problem. But uh, do you, like do we have like closing thoughts on that Loch Ness arc before yeah, we move I, on? Yeah, I think the Loch Ness arc, I think overall was like maybe the last of like the beginning arcs for this author. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's the last of like like a his Sir first Village stage. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. I feel like we just entered like Baratier. Yeah. Constantly, also around the fourth arc or so. Yeah, where, like... <sighs> I feel like he's got, like, a good grasp on character dynamics and where mm-hmm. he wants to take the story, and he's not... He's not lagging, and the stop roads... Like, it's interesting, right? He's writing a romance, but not one of the ones where it's like, will they, won't they? It's mm-hmm. like, it is it is steadily happening. And I, so and he has to add roadblocks that aren't like the usual mm-hmm. annoying rom-com roadblock of uh, they're not sure or they're misunderstanding mm-hmm. that they have feelings for another person. We're going through some of that, but it's like a lot more interesting. It, it also feels more organic where it's like, you know, you, you, you meet somebody and then like there's this attraction and then like you, you have that like little thing in the back of your mind where it's like, I think this person likes me and like you, you just have to, you don't want to mess up so you're progressing it slowly so you're just doing some things and mm-hmm. then stuff just kind of naturally happens like it does at the end of this arc or the next arc I should say. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but before we talk about this, for the, the Lock This Monster arc, I think really cool arc to see and watch. I think the biggest downside for it is that compared to everything else, it has the less of the 
character interactions and character growth from the other chapters yeah. that we're going to see. It was very much a like reaffirmation of the... Okarun and Ayase mm-hmm. and kind of like bringing them back together, which was really good. But yeah, as, as far as like the spectacle and action of that arc was fantastic. Um, yeah. And it I, definitely gets props for that. I uh, really enjoyed it. I just, yeah. I, you know what? That's probably going to be where season one ends uh, if they make Dan and Dan. Because that to me seems like the good like closing. You have the season in on like the shot of the, the cow picking up <laughs> and like the credits are rolling and the end of the credits just <laughs> shows up. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, GG's the little post uh, season stinger. Yeah. It's like, ooh, ooh, there's a new boy in town. Ooh. Ooh. Tune in for next season in a year and a half. Two and, and a half that, years. Well, season- you know the animation for this is going to be insane. So it's going to be like a three year before yeah. season kind of anime. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But by God. Mm-hmm. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll go off of your things. Okay. Onwards to what was a fantastic arc and has really placed Dan and Dan as what like... You, what are we going to call it? Well, we have like a smaller arc in between, which is about the mannequins. The mannequin arc. Yeah, is, it's the best uh, arc that's ever been written. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can go into that right away. I think... So the mannequin arc is super short. Basically... It's like a Yakuza sub-story. Yeah. Um, Jesus. Where they, they find this mannequin, he's running around... And he's come to life, and he they he does the Josuke splits apart when he hits by a bus, comes back together. Yeah, uh, yeah, he definitely does the Josuke Highway Star yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bike reconstruct. There's also a cool sequence where they have to like Ayase has to dodge a power line, so she like grabs mm-hmm. on to other things to redirect herself, and then Okaru oh. shows up and saves her. But the point of this arc, it's super short, and I think what really kind of resonated with me is the very end where. The mannequin is just like ever since he's talking to his mannequin wife, who yeah. doesn't move and talk, and, and it's just the torso and a head. And it's just like, I, ever since I met you, my entire life's changed. But, but it's very romantic stuff. And Okuru is thinking about Ayase. And I think this is the moment where like Okuru realizes like I like this girl. I need to make an effort to like be around her kind of deal. Maybe it's the moment where we've gone beyond a crush. Yeah. Uh, with this, so yeah, I, I like. I think the point of this little mini chapter, mini like one or two chapters, mm-hmm. is to send a message about the confession of love. Yeah. Which Okroon still hasn't, though, so it hasn't fully come to fruition well, as far as we've read. Right, and I think part of that... I, he has it in like, maybe some roundabout ways. Yeah, and like I think also, like it's, it's, like a, like, it's not like an actual anime. Like, in actual real life, you don't just walk up to somebody under the tree and go, like, I like you, please go out with me. Uh, uh, you do in the college you went to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. Um, but yeah, it's just like a... I think this is the moment that I think it really like kind of is trying to split itself away from like those harem tropes. Yeah. Where it's like in in those type of things, like in... Oh God, we never learn. The, the main character is just always like, I want to make sure everyone's happy. Whereas like Okaroon's like having this revelation of like, I like her. And I, I like me. I should give myself good things by going out with her like he he's like i need to do this i need a man up yeah it's, it's a very mm-hmm. moment of manning up and you know what i think that feeds well into the next arc because this this most recent arc which we will call the sub the what's it what's the worm called oh god lava worm i don't remember magma no, worm no. Man, no no that's the well it's, even, it's called the evil eye still like it's two different evil eye no there's only no, one no, evil there's eye there's only one evil eye the worm has a name. Yeah. It's like a cryptid. Yeah. We'll call it the Big Worm Arc. Big Worm. We'll call it Worm, a web serial by Robert. <laughs> uh, so, a like, big part of that arc is, like, Okaroon being faced with, like, a much more manly person yeah. than himself. It's a lot of jealousy. Kind and of kind of proving that. himself worthy in uh-huh. multiple ways, both as, like, a, as- a friend, as a love interest, as, like, a... A get it done kind of man. Yeah. When you when you tie Not, these arcs back to back, it yeah. like really creates like a nice little arc for Okaroon. Really like mm-hmm. Okaroon is so cool in this next. Yeah. He's like maybe the most impressive character so far well, because of what he does alone. He steps up and yeah. is, is during the situation. It's just like, hey, we got it. we're gonna I'm gonna make sure we're gonna all get out of this. But together. before we talk the about the be- better man, we should talk about. The, uh, like the real introduction of the other man, which is Gigi. Yeah. Which uh, chapters thirty one and t- two thirty three kind of introduce Gigi's yeah. like actual nuance. 
So Gigi gets sent over to Ayase's grandmother's place because his parents are in the hospital. There's something wrong with the house. People think it's like black mold or something. Like, it's, But he's like, no, I keep seeing this very creepy man again yeah. that makes it so I can't sleep. Uh-huh. And I, I make the joke that it looks like Bradley because it's a skinny, tall guy in his underwear, and he's making this stupid face that Bradley makes sometimes. I think it's a bit of a stretch, but all right. Um, but it, but like I, that thing is terrifying looking. Like yeah. it, it actually scared me. There's like a really good. Um... There's a shot in like 31 at the very end where like uh, Gigi's like eyes are like bugging out, and he's like thinking about it because it can't escape his mind. Yeah, and like. There's a shot at, like, the end of a chapter when, like, after yeah. Okarun and Ayase go there. Yeah. Where they crack open a, a door and see, like, all these tags inside of a room. Yeah. And is that the room where they were keeping the evil eye? It's the room... I forget. I think it's the room right above it. Because they have to go underground and they find other houses. Or it was... No, no it's the sacrifice room. Yes. That's what it is. And uh, I think that's where the evil eye stayed is what, what I'm getting yeah. to. Like, they have retreats back into there. And, and I think there's a lot of, And what's great about this arc and the great thing this author does is that, like, as we're getting to the main thing, there's a lot of buildup to, like, kind of reflect what's going on here. So, like, they're on the train. They're playing a card game. Okaroon's, like, losing every single round of this game to, like, Gigi. And then they start playing soccer, and Okaroon's like, I'm casually good at this, and Gigi's, like, all really good at it. Yeah. But then they also bond and, like, realize they have a lot of stuff in common. So. Right, which... This is a big point for Ayase. Like, she lets she like get, goes to the hot spring and does her stupid gator little side arc. Oh, I completely forgot about <laughs> the those. Dudes are fuck. Like, we're gators and they're, they're swimming towards her, which is very creepy. Yeah. Uh, I think these are also the things with the end. Yeah. Before we started, we were debating if just the older lady is a subterranean or if all the characters that show up are. Some of them could be human. Yeah. We only know for sure that the lady is subterranean. subterranean. Which, by the way, I guess not an alien or a yokai, just a completely different thing. <laughs> but they look just like, kind of like, they have a lot of the design sensibilities well, of I, the aliens. I, the aliens look a little bit more sleeker. Like, they seem to be more, like, android-ish. Like, this <laughs> one looks like, like, you look at them, and it looks like a worm that's, like, accordion together. Yeah. I um, guess, maybe. But anyways, Ayase giving the boys a little time to bond. And the, the bonding is, like, one of my favorite moments of the arc. It's really important because, like, it also, like, humanizes Gigi for Okarun. Because, yes, like, yes. imagine if, like, during the rest of this arc, he was still, like, a rival. But now Gigi's realizing, like, or Okarun's realizing Gigi's not a bad guy. He's there would have been nothing to gain from that because yeah. Gigi does such a good job at stepping up to the plate. Like, there's yeah. a sequence where Gigi has to solo carry the other two mm-hmm. who actually have superpowers and he's just a tall boy. Yeah. Um, so that was, re- like, this all is very endearing. Um, it made me like Gigi a lot because he's cool to Okaru and he's, like, kind while they're playing with, like, he's got to, like... He's got like a childish rivalry mm-hmm. almost where it's like, no, I, well, I like Ayase still. So yeah. he doesn't like ever shit talk Okarun. Like, you don't have a chance to right. like, pipsqueak. Right. Ayase does anal. You almost. can never handle it. Like, he never like jocks him, you know? He He's just kind of goofy kid who's very charming but very awkward a little bit. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like Okarun has his. Not Okarun. God, I keep getting them confused. Gigi has like. Gigi wants to be friendly to Okaroon because he, like, sees... He knows Okaroon's a friend to Ayase. Yeah. They, and so he understands, like, this person is important. I need to be friends with him and so on and so forth. Like, and they do bond. And I think that's just really important. And also makes that, like, love square dynamic a little bit more dramatic because now, like, you want them to be friends or not animalistic to each other or annoying to each other. And you... The thing that is, like, does... I, I feel like there is... It's weird... Because Momo hasn't shown any interest in Gigi since he came back, aside from, like, the blush. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, like, why introduce him as, like, a love rival if, if there's nothing there? Like, I hope they don't keep I think, working that angle. I think the big part is that, like, the biggest conflicts right now are coming from... I think this is the, maybe the other small thing that needs to, like, come up later, is that the biggest, like, relationship self-esteem issues are coming from Okru more than Ayase. Ayase. Yeah. Okarun is like in the last arc was like doing push ups because he doesn't want to feel useless for her. 
and then now is being put up against a guy who is much taller than him, much more athletic than mm-hmm. him. Actually dated her. Yeah, actually like... Was, her first love is yeah. how he was introduced. Yeah, so it's like a big... Uh, Did we find out why they stopped dating? I don't. I think it was like a very much like a crush kind of thing. And then he moved away. He moved away is what yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, or she did, or they just were in a... Mm. At different places. Cause he they has... might expand on that in some yeah. significant way. What I was getting at, I think, is like, don't keep... If if Gigi doesn't have a shot, don't keep him as a... Like, don't write him as a potential mate still. Like, mm-hmm. have a little arc where it's clear that he steps down and lets Okarun keep pursuing her. Because mm-hmm. it hasn't happened yet. There hasn't been That's a true. moment where it's like, you know what, Okarun... I think she might like you too, bro. Or like, go get them. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna open the way for you. And to be fair, uh, they've been busy. They have been busy. <laughs> he doesn't really have time for romance right now. Yeah. Uh, on account that his life's a fucking nightmare. He's just a kid, and yeah, was, life is a. Nightmare. And so we get introduced to the grannies, uh, who are all subterraneans, maybe potentially. But like, I like this thing here, which is a great like kind of uh, for for Like, this is our land. Uh, like they're talking about like the the ground that they live in yeah. and stuff like that and where the worm is, um, so um, they kind of take over the place. What I really like is Ayase coming home to the subterraneans having beaten up the boys. Yeah, it's quite the scene because like they're they're on the ground bleeding pretty bad. They they rough them up pretty bad, mm-hmm. and this gets to be a nice little solo ayase fight mm-hmm. this is why i think they might be human i don't know i don't know if, if they're humans or not it's hard I they're not doing anything like i think crazy. they're taking hits well but they're not doing anything crazy like yeah in, like they don't have Lopez. super strength yeah like like the grandma does well i mean this old guy looks strange but one thing i really like about this little solo ayase fight a little cool bit of action is how she has to get physical she has to do some like knee strikes and kicks Mm-hmm. And she's not used to it, so she she gets recoil damaged, she which gets, is nice. And she gets thrown to the room. And yeah, then, like she gets tossed around really well. She gets it, put it, into chokehold. She gets kicked around. It, it, this this anaconda, this Jennifer Lopez anaconda panel is insane. Yeah, just on on the words, the the pose that Granny takes. It's so it's such a powerful. And he hit. does this panoramic shot too. I think that's like yeah. a good way to describe it of like her going through the wall and then like hitting the other because she goes through two walls. She yeah. goes through the wall that's like between the hallway and then she goes through the wall. That's Holy like, shit. Shit, yeah. yeah, she goes through, yeah, like the the half wall. Yeah, that is such a like. We're talking about uh, chapter thirty six, page twelve and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen. Yeah. Um, like I I I make it a point to bring up some of the fantastic art that's in this it's manga so because good. it's insane. Like this might be my second my second favorite artist period yeah. with how good he draws characters, how good his character designs are, but like. How good of an understanding he has of like panel flow and action as yeah. well. Uh, also, then, we didn't mention it, but Turbo, Turbo Granny is back in this arc. She wasn't in the last arc. Yeah, at all. Turbo Granny is still in cat form and reluctantly helping the crew. She here is. Uh, there, there's got to be a trope called for that, where it's the it's the reluctant helper. The reluctant helper. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but human sacrifices, I thought, was a cool dark turn uh-huh, that we I get around too. here. This shot here, yeah, was so. Cool. I wanted to get there's so much unnerving scale shots in uh, chapter 37 of both the underground city like how deep does this chaos and madness go but and also the worm and like you get the idea of a cycle where like oh this isn't the first house that's been here it's been like they take this house they do whatever they need to do for it and then they quite literally bury it in the ground so the worm there was a confusion I had while reading it, right? Yeah. The evil eye influences people to commit suicide. Yes. Which is potentially what happened to Gigi's parents. Potentially, yeah. I think no, I think they clarify it near the end, but I forgot which way they clarify it. Yeah. Uh, they do survive. Yeah. But then the worm is doing what again? It's called a giant man eating worm. An earthworm cryptid. It's Kuragagari. Uh, yes. Hold on. Pause. God, where were we? I got interrupted by a We were talking door. about the scale of things and yeah, the, um, the Kuragare. Which we did confirm, yeah. Um, Gigi's parents were influenced yeah. by the evil eye. A Mongolian deathworm. Uh, yeah, classic. 
But um, in chapter 38, one thing I really like is Gigi pulling himself together to save the crew. I did mention that. Mm-hmm. But, like, that makes for such a more interesting introductory arc. He's carrying the team. Mm-hmm. He's saving everyone. He's not being annoying about it. Like, you feel bad for him because he's just a dude at this point. Yeah. And Okarun and Ayase are trying to commit suicide over and over. Mm-hmm. Which, oh my god, yeah, I totally forgot about this. Yeah, it's it's dark. You do get to see Gigi coming home to his parents almost dying. Yeah, like they are hanging themselves off of the balcony. Um, it's it's kind of just crazy. Uh, and, and he's getting roughed up. I think that's what makes it so endearing. Mm-hmm. But like, and they're both he's of them, such a good sport about like, it. Like Ayase is using his tel- her telekinesis powers to like do everything she can, and then Okaru is like tapping into his like. Uh, turbo granny powers yeah. a little bit to like move around, uh, but he just God, this arc is incredible. It really is. Like mm-hmm. this is season two is going to be such a banger. You guys watch out for it. Yeah. Um, the sums the stand, <laughs> which is the evil eye. So we get a, another banger, banger, banger yokai story. Yeah. Where the evil eye was a sacrificed child that has a lot of grudges. Yeah. Yeah. But it leads to some potential inconsistencies that I think we're addressing in the most recent chapters, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Of, like, how come Gigi still thinks that the evil eye wants to help people and wants to just play? Like, clearly the evil eye has shown nothing but disdain for all of humanity. He just I, wants people to suffer. I think, like, he, Gigi's trying to look... And th- this might be clarified. It might be more expounded about Gigi. Gigi is looking past, like... The clear will to murder everything. Yeah, he's looking past that and he's like realizing that like this evil eye has been robbed of like it was robbed of its childhood and was like locked up and it's like like there's a, has a flashback right here. It's like just once I wanted to play with the others. Like he mm-hmm. was condemned to be this sacrifice and was never like given a chance to live. Um, and then. You know, the cycle continues, the next family moves into the house, and then the parents kill suicide, him aside, yep. and then, like, you can't, you get an idea of, like, what the cycle was, like, the parents would kill themselves, and then the granny would come in, and then it would take the, the kid, and then they would sacrifice the kid, like, they would bury the house for him, so it was just, like, a constant cycle of, like... Yeah, I guess, um, I missed that bit where, like, that kid then goes on to become a sacrifice, and, like, the meaning of, like... Well, shit, I'm, I'm now, like, my negative energy is... Well, I don't know if he forced that suicide or if, like, it just started the No, that's from there. the worm. Because the worm also emits the suicide waves. And then the, what keeps Gigi from happening is because Gigi is supposed to be really the next sacrifice. Because mm-hmm. his parents kill himself. Yeah. And then he comes home and saves them. And then the and then the, yeah. the subterraneans would have sacrificed him. So, yeah. yeah. It, I guess, um... The evil eye is not the one who does the suicides. That's what I got mixed mixed up. It is the worm. It's the worm, yeah. Right. And the evil eye is just it's like just a, pure is a grudge powerful energy. yokai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but still, that grudge energy, as soon as it takes over, <laughs> it's I'm gonna kill them all. Yeah. It's it's just and like they fuse together and it's just it's scary. It um, is scary. But like it has a lot of themes of empathy because like Gigi almost sounds nice. He's like, hey, I understand you just want to play, which is yeah. why, like, I think it's such a good twist where it's like, oh, this has worked for Akrosuki, mm-hmm. but this time it went completely awry. It's like, oh, this this yokai tricked you. Yeah. Which is why, to this day, like, he's still saying the kid just wants to play. He's still showing so much empathy. And it's like, you've been tricked multiple times. How can you still believe this? Mm-hmm. I want to see how this kind of storyline uh, wraps up. And, like, I love how occult it gets. You can even see like the body of a of an orphan of like a sacrifice a sacrificed child mm-hmm. in one of these, and like it gets re- re- really ritualistic, so it's very unnerving. Yeah, he finds the and maybe theme. this is why it's eighteen plus, but it doesn't usually dip into stuff that's that dark. Yeah. Uh, but so then finally, like so, like he Gigi was like selected by this yokai as kind of like being the next sacrifice, and then Gigi kind of like accepts him. And, like, fuses with him, and then he becomes, you know, Super Saiyan. GG. GG. Um, and I was like, oh, cool! GG powered up, he's gonna join the party. And then and the he, chapter ends with... I wanna kill all humans. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how serious this is. Oh, it's serious. Yeah, like, this isn't a... a like, it's not a conflict. It's, like, fully taken over. 
and uh, it is, is going to kill everyone there. And it just starts going straight for it. So this was like a nice heightened tension because you still have the warm active. Oh, he makes a house. Yes. Okay. That's also what he does in the, in the most recent chapter. But it makes a house because like he gets trapped in the house when he dies and gets buried. And so I guess, yeah, that would be the symbolism. It's his domain. But what's cool I like is that he creates a soccer ball out of negative energy. Yeah. So it all wraps back around to their little soccer match. Yeah. Um, with this final fight where like the main the main antagonist of this arc is playing soccer. Mm-hmm. And so Gigi is like the perfect uh, pick for it as someone who like practices soccer. Yeah. And I feel like in this instance, like the worm is like obstacles that like are Ogrun and um, Ayase cannot like control. Like they're, mm. they're just they're, they're just something. You think they couldn't have done? I'm sure they could have beat well, it. It's, well, it's it, they may have been able to beat it, but it's like it's it's not something like we've already like gone through that. Like if we're going to like the metaphor of like every arc so far has been them like enhancing their relationship or like friendship or whatever Mm -hmm. this is like we've already they've already dealt with like the stuff that's out of their control they know what it's like and like it's there and if someone comes out comes around and like is now a rival or like is like coming into the relationship like how do you deal with that together kind of thing like because now okaroon because imagine if okaroon didn't become friends or didn't understand Gigi. And she's like, I'm just going to beat him up and try to beat him. But the the extra level of this fight is I need to make sure Gigi doesn't get severely hurt because he's our friend now. Yeah. I get, yeah, that does add that extra stakes. And but um, this fight against Evil Eye Gigi is the best fight in the series so far. Yeah. And that's saying a lot. Like when, when Okarun stops the soccer kick, like yeah. so- stops the soccer ball with his own kick, like the whole arc kind of comes together yeah like their initial meetings and they're like doing the friendly soccer match and now they're doing the deadly one yeah and okaroon solos this enemy Mm -hmm. um in the most impressive way like this fight is so fucking cool Mm -hmm. particularly the scene where okaroon gets stuck in the house and he has to do like squats yeah to like keep hitting a gg but also in that sequence like okaroon goes for an attack and gg blocks it in a certain way okaroon then and then counters with a knee and then when another attack gets blocked, he's going to counter with the knee again, and Okarun gets even lower to dodge the knee. So, like, there's a lot of, like, I learned how you fight, mm-hmm. I learned how you counter my moves, and I'm going to out-counter it. Yeah. <laughs> the sequence where uh, Momo tries to... Momo gets catapulted up, and just, I love her face here. Um, and then she's like, I need to get someone here as quickly as possible. I'll light the house on fire. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant tactics. Um... So they have this fight, and uh, it's it's like it's hard to like discuss just the visual medium because like forty three is like I all mean oh, that page right there. If you go back, um, this one, nope, nope, that one, nope, nope, that one. <laughs> uh, page six and seven where uh, Okarun gets hit with a ball and uh-huh. then gets fucking um, uh, Akuma heavy kicked like. Yeah. He, he, like, Street Fighter moves are getting hit, and, like, it just looks so good. Yeah. Like, I, look, like, I, I looked at this, and, like, this is this is quite literally a movie that happens in this show. Oh, Karoon's, like, this strong little spryly kid, but, like, yeah. buff up Gigi's, like, this paragon of humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just, like, a really contrasting, cool thing about their different sizes. But, yeah, like I mentioned, the little house bit where they get trapped is definitely my favorite bit. Yeah. Um. So they, they just... Had this great fight, but then also Okarun like thinks about like Gigi and the like, relationship between each other, um, and so I don't. It's just a really. It's hard to discuss like the the visual portions, like the combat with for me at least. But like it's a great fight, and just the dynamics of it is mm-hmm. just incredible. And so they get to the house, and then they're able to put the house out, but they've killed the worm. No, they haven't killed the worm. No, because the worm's still alive. And uh, the point I wanted to get to, like, the next big cool thing to me is the firefighter Ayase thing, where it's like she gets right. to do her little wrap-up sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in it, she met the little monk guy that becomes a party member now. Uh-huh. And the monk guy talks about how, like, it's humans' fears that allow, like, these things, like, sacrifices to be a legend and become a tradition. And Ayase kind of wants to break that loop of tradition by making sure that 
just because they didn't end up sacrificing someone, the worm is not going to mm-hmm. go ahead and destroy the city. She's going to kind of stop that fate and thus end that tradition and end that legend, yeah. which is what she does with the, her the big uh, fire hose attack. This was sick. And yeah, she's also just smashing the worm physically, mm-hmm. but then she goes into I fire. I think it's a great room. way to, like, she's taking the matter into her own hands of, like, she's not going to just let it happen. She's not going to, like, go back on what works. She's going to take another look at the situation and be like, all right, how can I fix this permanently kind of deal? Yeah. Um, all these dudes are still alive. Uh, they all get up. They- yeah, the worm ate all the subterraneans, but they all got thrown up, so... No, nothing of nothing of consequence happened to them. Yeah. Uh, I, so when this chapter came out, I was like, "What the actual fuck is this is going on here?" Where she uses the worm as like a giant hose. Yeah. And and comes back. Uh, <laughs> commencing hose down. That's her ultimate. That's her final attack. The is, hose down. The hose. That's her three bar. She would love. She would love it to be spelled like hose. H O E S. Yeah. Be the hose down. Um. The my favorite next bit is the kind of teamwork that goes into taking out Gigi. Mm-hmm. It's like such good choreography, and like Grandma drops down, and in the course of a chapter, she has this well executed plan that even uses the mannequin and yeah. Chiquita to to trap uh, Gigi into the into the dummy. Yeah, also, it really shows how competent she is. Also. Jennifer Lopez's grandma was going to fight along with us, apparently. Yeah, she did. That's crazy. Yeah, no, so grandma keeps showing up. I love it when we have competent people actually be competent at their job. Like Gojo is in um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. Like where it's like they don't fuck around. They get the job done. Yeah, and that's exactly what Gigi showed. Or sorry, grandma. It's funny because Gigi is like a, I guess how you can call a, a grandparent. Yeah. In that's what JoJo Part Three does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, grandma comes down on the dummy and yeah, executes that awesome plan. And I really just love how it's all choreographed. And it's great because it ties back into like the previous small arc and like, and now less in the thematical way, more of like a story, like plot beat the beat way. Where it's like we introduce this character who helps fix this plot later, and so the the author is not using is like using all of all of his like workspace that he's setting up in this story. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. Like he like he even brings back the aliens because they get them back over there in time, and then like he uses the mannequin because the mannequin traps them together. Then uh, chapter 48, uh, my favorite sequence there is Okarun trapped in the magma. And just like, I felt bad for the kid. I was getting worried. And Ayase yeah. is so nervous over it. And he's just clutching uh, Turbo Granny's cat form when, yeah. they, res- when they rescue him. Hot. <laughs> um, Which kind of leads us into the... The kind of epilogue arc that we're currently in the middle of. And he, that's the thing. We don't know if this arc is going to... Evolve into something bigger. Yeah. Like, this could be a whole other, like, GG arc where, like, they have to fight the evil eye. That's the thing. Like, the the way this arc is going so far, and now we get into, like, I guess predictions of, like, yeah. where we're going a little bit is GG still can't Look quite... How, like, realistic this food is. Yeah. Well, like, what really the fuck food. is going on? GG can't quite control the evil eye, but they have found a system where they make it Rama one half, where if he gets hit with cold water, he's fine and he's back to gg but if he gets hit with no opposite Opposite. if he gets hit with cold water he goes into the evil eye and the evil eye immediately goes for kills yeah if he gets hit with hot water he's back in his real form and the i I always forget the the mannequin's name but the mannequin kind of like is living with gg now as a way to like contain him no Mm -hmm. matter what i think so if he transforms he can get uh isolated i think as of this episode or this uh, this chapter, they're no longer like strictly together because Gigi has gone to yeah, the point where his... that that's no longer the case. But that was the case, yeah. Uh, early uh, on, but we also get these really small moments with Yase and Okarun, um, which helps submit like the author is steadily progressing this romance in a direction, uh, like they're playing with each other's fingers on the car ride home. Uh, and you're just like, oh, yeah, it was really cute. She's doing little tap dances, mm-hmm. and he's still oblivious. But at the end of the most recent chapter, she's just straight up holding hands with him, yeah, and like no bullshits. Also, Gigi reuniting with his family is very like very endearing because he's such a sweet kid. And like, I, I think this art did a very good job at getting me, yeah, invested in Gigi. So these, like, they arrest the rest of the subterraneans or whoever these things are, or like 
people are, and then we get introduced to that there's a whole third faction that neither one of them are aware of. So maybe the next okay. character we get introduced is someone that's obsessed with these guys. Subterranean fan. Yeah. I was um when you when you were wrapping up the arc, I like I was noting to myself like how cool our party is because mm-hmm. there's another cool Oda s- dinner scene, bef- uh, right after Gigi gets back, and it's like. Our party is the four kids. We got the grandma. We got Turbo Granny in another body. Yeah. We got Chiquita, the alien, and his son. Yeah. And then we have a mannequin and a mannequin's wife that has not said a thing yet. I mean, is she even real? I never even I mean, thought of... Is she just I, a mannequin? I think she's just a mannequin. Guy. No, that would be too cool. No, she's real. <laughs> she's real in our hearts. I love this whole... Ace Attorney panel. Yeah, those cute Ace Attorney <laughs> bits. But yeah, that kind of like wraps up the arc and we're still like, Gigi gets exercised by very funny um, heavy metal... God, that was so good. Uh, exorcism dancers. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it gets... It gets... Uh, <laughs> it gets um, called <laughs> off a little bit. They're like, okay, if you need us, call us back. So I hope we get to see well, these guys again. Look at these JoJo motherfuckers. <laughs> More like, it looks like a Dragon Ball Saiyan art character. Like this guy's straight up doing a JoJo pose. Yeah, he is doing a JoJo pose. Um, yeah, that this whole bit was just great. I um, love uh, I love the kids getting super into the performance because it's that good. They're like, yeah. Even even Grandma like kind of gets into <laughs> it, but it's actually like also doing what she needs to be doing. Um, but yeah, I think like the office is doing a really good well of like blending its action sequences to like help in the development of the relationship between them of like Okru and Ayase yeah and I think that's like our main focus right now and well that's the main focus of the story I think that's even that even like the tagline of this was like a romantic comedy action series I think was when we were first reading it like yeah. it's, it, or it, it's a it, romance it leads, it's it like it leads with the fact that it's a rom-com mm-hmm. uh, a, a cold story but yeah like that's the lingering feeling is like how is G- how is the evil eye going to be redeemed? Because he just seems purely evil right now. So I don't see like what Gigi sees in him. Like he sees the sad backstory, but clearly the evil eye, when it takes over, has no empathy for anyone. Yeah. So I don't... I'm curious to see where that's going to go. I am too. Uh. Yeah. So from now we're we're like at chapter fifty five. At this point, they've tried to excise it. They are on like watch twenty four seven with Gigi. So where do we go from here? Um, because I don't have a clue. Like, well, so Joe and I have a theory. Oh um, yeah. Well, Momo has her cute maid arc as well. Not yeah. not really worth mentioning, but she's getting a job to help with the repairs of the house. So that's very cute. Yeah. Uh, and like I mentioned, her, the, the best friends are fantastic. They help Okaroon. They're like wing woman, wing manning, like so hard of like, we're gonna bring them over here, and they're just gonna have to deal with each other because. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does end with like a full handhold. So we're getting like progress is being made in this rom com, which keeps me invested yeah. in the romance or aspects. And then the story and the action is fan fucking tastic, mm-hmm. and the comedy is great. So it's like so big. It's it's hitting on every level. And we left off on a nice cliffhanger. We're like, oh, they're not able to contain the evil eye this time. He learned his lesson. Mm-hmm. He put himself in the house. Yeah. So you can't splash water on him. Which to be fair, they should have. Should have seen that one. So I think what's going to happen here is that Yase was pouring herself tea, and she has it in her mouth currently. Ooh. And she's going to... She's going to spit in his face. And I think they're going to have to have a moment where they sit down with Gigi and be like, hey, this is is actually becoming a problem now. Like, you're making progress, but like... Because Gigi's crying is what kept us from exercising. And so we do have to wrap up. Yeah. It's like, like, what... And like, the thing is, like, what is the arc and the point of, like, what we're trying to do here? And I think... I have confidence that the author knows what it's doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm very curious to see what he goes with this because it... I, I, I don't know. And, like, what's the point of, like, what is he going to take away from this? What's the... Like, because this is, like, a, a coming-of-age story. Like, it's something that... Something these kids these age need to, like, learn about life. Essentially. <laughs> these kids need don don These kids need to fucking... <laughs> Um, but yeah, Willard had a really good prevailing theory about where this whole story is going or how it's going to conclude. I up. think we're making a soccer team. Yeah. I think, uh, I think other people probably have probably caught on with that soccer elements, but also like, I think what cinches it for me 
is Ayase's goal or goalie hands. Like, she's the yeah. perfect goalie for this team mm -hmm. um, with their psychic abilities. But, like, all the characters are so acrobatic, so, like... Like, Arisa would be a good passer because yeah. she can, like, guarantee, like, she puts a thread on it and it goes... Okaroon's, of course, a striker. Yeah. So we got Okaroon... So we got four with the kids. Yeah. Granny's the coach, so she doesn't count. Yeah. We have Chiquita, the mannequin, maybe? I think Mannequin Man would be, like, a good, like, defensive player or something. So that's... Because the mannequin man I can see where he runs and breaks apart and locks someone up. Yo, the monk could be the seventh. Yeah. I think we're out of characters because I think the two friends. Two friends are going to be water. Be, they're gonna, no, they're going to be the people talking in the stands who like the, the commentators. exposition. They got to be the commentators. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. The speed wagons. Yeah. That are in every sports show. Now. They're going to get like a little desk and they're just going to be excited. So about by it. my estimate, we're missing at least like three to four party It's 11 members. people on a football yeah. team, right? Yeah. So, and I think also it might end up being like a tournament Well, scenario. we would be playing for the Okaroon ball. That's the soccer oh, ball. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 That makes sense too. Of course. And, um, and it kind of wraps up of like a man getting his balls. Yeah, that's the tagline. That's the true tagline of the yeah. story. Watch, think, a, watch a boy get his balls. And I think previously it was like, it could also be a one on one team up, but like, I think it'd be fun if like they do like a sort of like arc where like all the different like cryptid type things have to like go against each other because you have a yokai team and then you have an alien. Like, yeah, the subterraneans kind of feed into it being a turn. I was like, oh, it's going to be the aliens versus the humans yeah. and using the yokai. But yeah. it could be like a whole, a lot of people are going for the Dragon Balls. Yeah. It would, but it would fit the action. It would be like a Kuroko Basque style, like mm -hmm. action soccer where we're fighting while doing soccer. Yeah. It would. It I would, think it would fit the the tone and yeah. comedy of the story super well. Yeah, I think it would also be a really good wrap up because it just was like, it's like the, like the, just like a very like kid high school way of like feeling successful in your life at that age yeah you uh, win the, the big sports tournament you get your balls that would be fantastic yeah. uh, but no matter which way the series is going it's yeah. currently I, I would just hate for it to be like some sort of big bad or like having to fight a big monster thing at the end but like it, That's, it, it could also do that I would just like I think also what I need is like an arc that is more slice of lifey for the kids just like just well, a small one we get a lot of, we, get, we get plenty of slice of life yeah. stuff in between I, I actually I quite like the pacing of mm -hmm. uh, supernatural stuff to a slice of life mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I believe in the romance yeah this is currently one of the best manga out no one talks about it yeah. what the fuck it's on it's on reddit like it's all, like as soon as the chapter comes out it goes to the top of like 2000 karma there's like a hundred. I just don't comments. think any of the YouTubers have caught on yet, as yeah. far as I know. Well, it's very so. Hey, share this with your friends. <laughs> yeah. We need we need people to I watch mean, it's, these it's videos. It's only fifty it's... chapters. You gotta have at least three hundred for totally not Mark to like actually break up into five videos. Except Chainsaw Man is going to be. That's true, but Chainsaw Man's complete kind of. It's yeah, like it could have been one video. One. Yeah. All right. Just like this talk could have been 40 minutes, but here we are at an hour or two. Thank yeah. you for joining us, everyone. We said an hour. All right. Bye. Bye. We'll, we'll probably come back. Not in an hour, because the arcs have gotten long, so we'll probably come we're back one, after a set amount of weeks. We will, yeah, we're invested now, so we actually want to do regular check-ins. Right. All right. Then. Bye. Yeah.